Hi everyone. Hi. Linda and I are in Tenterfield at the moment having a great time exploring this beautiful historical town. Did you know that Tenterfield is home to some of Australia's most significant historical events? Events such as the birth of the Federation and we're going to be going and exploring the School of the Arts where the nation uh, was born. Where else are we going? Well, we are going to the Tenterfield Saddler. Amazing story there with Peter um, Allen's heritage. It's a story that he wrote around that. Lovely story told by our mate Jim there. Yes, yes. We get to interview uh, Jim who was uh, volunteering that day at the Saddler. Then we go to the, the Tenterfield Railway Museum. Yeah, and Tenterfield is just a place that's so rich in history. So come with us as we explore Tenterfield. As we uh, endeavour to discover what makes this town so significant. Tenterfield, New South Wales. Hi everyone. Oh. Linda and I are at the Big Apple in Stanford making our way down to Tenterfield. And so we've called in and of course what do you have when you're at the Big Apple? Apple pie. Apple pie. I think pie. this is Grandma's um, apple pie they said. Oh wow. And it looks really yummy. It does, with ice cream. So we'll see you down in Tenderfield. <music> Sitting outside the Tenderfield Saddler, this is such an iconic building and such an important part of Australian history. Uh, established back in 1858 and has such an incredible connection with the famous Peter Allen. The saddlery was originally owned by Sir Stuart Donaldson who went on to become New South Wales first Premier. I mentioned Peter Allen just before. Tenderfield was the town that Peter Allen was born in and he went on to write that famous song the Tenderfield Saddler all about the town that he loved. Uh, built in 1870 to be a, a saddlery. Uh, over the top, you know, the first 10 or 15 years of the place, it was a saddlery. It was a private home. It was a bank. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Predominantly saddlers. Yep. Uh, and the five saddlers in total since up until 1995. Uh, the one that we hear the most about is Peter Allen's grandfather, George Walnut. Yes. He was here that from was 1908 connection. till 1960. Yeah. That's the 52 years that they talk about. Oh, wow. Um, uh, the I, I suppose the the, the saddlers in in that era were uh, the most in, one of the most important businesses in the in the place because they looked after your horses they looked after your all of the other things that you needed to have on your farm particularly yep. around here when we had um, a lot of timber uh, and you used a lot of uh, oh, yes. bullock teams yep. yeah so yep. the, the leather work and whatever that went into having the rigs and whatever for a, a bullock team were pretty important and that's where the saddlers made most of their money. The yeah. last saddler left here in 1995. Oh really? So it worked all that time? Yeah, right through. The, his name wow. was Trevor Gibson. Yep. Uh, and he only left because Peter Allen died in 1992. Yeah. All of Peter Allen's songs become popular again. Yes. The tourists came along to see this Tenderfield saddler. Yes. My wife has never heard the Tenterfield Saddler. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been singing it for the last few weeks yeah. at home. Yeah, well, there's all the words there. All the but, lyrics. But, uh, but Trevor Gibson, he he was a great saddler, and uh, but you know he was getting towards the end of his working life. Yeah. So he decided to sell it, and uh, the the people, the a fellow who owned a hotel in town, he bought it, uh, and he was a pretty savvy businessman, and he just just made it into a little museum that we've got today. Yeah, fantastic. He only passed away a few years ago and has now been bought by another big Australian company and they have plans to make it into a R.E. Williams type. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, no, okay. but this place will still stay as mm. the Little Saddler mm. uh, Museum. Yeah. Like I've said to a lot of people, if it hadn't have been for the Peter Allen song, this would just be another old building in town. Yeah. And people come and they, they hear, like here today, I've had about 50 odd people here today. Great. Oh, that's we amazing. average probably 60 or 70 a day. That's great. Okay, yeah. Things are a bit quiet just the last couple of days. And of course, we've got school holidays starting yes. in Queensland, so it'll be on again next week. So, welcome to the Tenterfield Weather Rock. Very 
helpful piece of weather assistance here. So if the wet, the rock is dry, it's fine. So like today, it's fine. Yeah. Yep. If, great. If the rock is wet, is wet. It's raining. If the rock is white, snow. If the rock is swinging, it's windy. If the rock is jumping, earthquake. If it's jumping. If it's jumping, it's earthquake. And if it's gone, it's a cyclone. For a place to stay, could I suggest a beautiful hip camp called Behind the Hedge? The hosts, Peter and Sandy, have done such an amazing job here in the garden and they can identify every tree, every shrub, every plant that's in the garden. And a beautiful centrepiece is an American redwood tree. And whilst you're here, if you're needing some fresh eggs for some bacon and eggs, all you've got to do is just go down to the chook pen that, that like us, is uh, right next door to our camper van. You just grab yourself some fresh chicken eggs and go and have some beautiful bacon and eggs for breakfast. And what can be better than that on a cold morning in Tenterfield than having a nice hot coffee and fresh bacon and eggs? So how am I doing at cooking the bacon and eggs, you honey? You're doing an amazing job at cooking bacon and eggs. Oh, fantastic. Or not. Didn't I, I got the eggs. Oh. No, I got the eggs. Direct straight from the chicken back. So what did I, what have I done? Um, I made the coffee and tea. Oh, hang on. You did put the bacon in the pan. Oh, I did. And then I didn't put enough in. And we've got Tosca here, checking that everything is going to her plan. Tosca's here Tosca because Tosca wants to come and eat some of our bacon and eggs. Mm -hmm. Don't you, Tosca? Tosca. So here I am at the start of the garden that is Peter and Sandy's where we're staying at beyond the hedge. So come with me as I walk through the garden and let's explore it together. I'm only going to take you through some parts of the garden and I don't know all the names of the plants. Pete does and he will take you on a fantastic tour explaining to you all the beautiful plants that he has here and why he created different parts of the garden. So there's so many ways that you can go. You can go down this way or we're going to get actually head through here. Then Mark's having a break, having a sit down over the bridge. Hopefully there's no trolls to get me as I cross. And then you can see there's so many different ways that you can go. You can go across this little bridge here. And then as we look down to the rest of the garden, so many other beautiful features. Oh, including you, Marky. Beautiful feature. <laughs> Check out this rather unusual twisted tree that we found in these beautiful gardens up behind the head. Please look at the Tenterfield School of Arts. So here we are today at the Tenterfield School of Arts hanging out with Sir Henry Parks here, who it's named after, and we'll tell you lots of the historical significance of this place. So I'm now standing in the room here at the School of Arts in Tenterfield where Sir Henry Parks back in 1889 gave his first famous speech calling for the federation of all the states and the formation of Australia as a nation and it is just this building is of such historical significance because of that because after that event Henry Park went traveling around Australia making his famous speeches and then eventually in 1901 
we saw the Federation of Australia. Sadly for Parks, who was New South Wales Premier, I think it was from 1872 to 1891, sadly for Parks, he passed away five years before he saw his dream being fulfilled. For well, the many years that Henry Parks was campaigning for the Federation, a number of cartoonists would represent that. So this one here, which was in the bulletin, 1889, is a represent representation of Henry Parks on his high horse and saying that Federation is in the air. The portrait of the person behind me was a guy by the name of Edward Werrett. He was mayor here in Tenterfield for six years, but he was also, as mayor, he was the person who chaired the banquet when Henry Parks gave that historic speech. It's just amazing me just how history has survived all these years. So why were School of Arts buildings created, you ask? Well, let me tell you. So many communities created School of Arts buildings back in the day for various reasons, but particularly in Tenterfield, it was to create reading rooms. So reading rooms were created for people to come and better their education by reading books which weren't as available to everybody, catching up on, on news and improving their skills. So they created spaces where not only men but women could come and improve their skills and access reading rooms. So these two rooms here, this one and the one next door, are the original reading rooms in Tenterfield of the School of Arts. Now Linda and I have been trying to find access to a back room. How tricky is this? <laughs> this is the portrait that's supposed to be seeing new pups looking over the banquet. Hello. <gasps> there she is. Well, it's time to go shopping. I think you should buy me a new dress. I've got to go and buy Linda a new dress. So Linda and I have ta really taken the advantage of turning up early in Tenterfield and been getting out and about. We've been to uh, the Saddler, we've been to a historic cottage and now we're here at the Railway Museum. Why does the train have a steering wheel? So this is the view down the track that the engine driver would have got, but I'm a bit perplexed as to why it has a steering wheel when it just stays on a track. It's Mark down the front there doing his videoing. Still in first class. Got some lovely old luggage up here. To imagine the stories this train could tell. Where's the bathroom? Ladies, what the toilet looks like? Shall we have a look? What's the toilet look like? Okay, yeah. Where are you heading, young man? Where's my coffee? Come on. Yeah, no, we don't do beverages on this train. Just... That's where we drive the train from. This is just first class I'm sitting in at the moment, and boy. I used to travel on the trains to work back in the late 70s, early 80s, and the train travel back then was nothing like what I'm sitting in now. We've been having a look around the Tenterfield Railway Museum and just been getting some fascinating facts from the guy who's here volunteering today. But I used to work for the railways many years ago and I've never seen uh, a carriage that has room or a little space allocated for a dog and a coffin. Check this out. Space for a coffin and a dog. So Linda and I are about to go in and check out the barracks for the visiting rail crews. Can I have a cup of tea? I wouldn't mind a cup of tea actually now. Yeah. I don't think the carpets were here then. Oh gosh, you scared me. Did she scare you? Yeah, when I walked in, 
I thought that lady was sitting there as well. Yes, I did. So this must be uh, like the kitchen area. A shared kitchen. A shared kitchen where the rail crew could come in and prepare their own meals. So we've been through the Tenterfield Railway Museum, which has been a lovely step back in time, mm. not only just of railway history in the area, but also local history. There's so much to see here and here, like talk to, to the volunteers here. Lovely step back in time really beautifully um, maintained buildings and history. What stories could be told as you walk through the trains to yeah. walk through the barracks and... The ghosts of history yeah, past. along the railway platform and, you know, so many people have been coming and going. It's just a really lovely, um, yeah, opportunity just to stop and think about the years that used to be. Do you know when the train might be coming through? Or have they stopped for now? You missed it, please. When did the last train... <gasps> 35 years ago? The last train finished 35 years ago. You missed it. I'm just a little bit late. So that's Tenerfield, a town waiting to be explored in New South Wales. And if you've got a favourite uh, destination, please share it with us. If you've enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And next on our destination list, where are we heading to? Tamworth. Tamworth, so come and see uh, Australia's country music capital as we go and explore Tamworth. I think we're going to drive past us near the Saddler again and past the School of Arts as we head on down to Tamworth. Tamworth. There it is, School of Arts. There's the School of Arts.